So what would you say if I told you this is the reason why you're constantly comparing yourself to others? Let me explain. Hello lovely people, it's Hamza and how are we today? So tell me if this sounds familiar to you. You're scrolling through your social media and a flurry of intrusive thoughts come into your head about how good this person is at this or how wealthy this person is or how healthy this person and you sit there wallowing, feeling bad for yourself, thinking woe is me. Why am I so far behind everyone else in all these aspects? Am I just a failure? If this sounds familiar to you, then stick to the end of the video because I think I have some useful points. I want you to imagine for me for just a minute, think of your goals like a stack of dominoes in a very cramped hallway. And the domino at the very end is your ultimate goal. So we ask ourselves, how do we knock over the domino at the very end? And of course we know the answer. We knock over the domino at the front and eventually they'll all knock over until finally the one you want knocks over at the end. Now depending on your goal, that length of dominoes could be vast or it could be stout. But the key here is if you waste time thinking about how long the length of dominoes is or how to quickly knock over the last one, the longer you have to wait and the further you get from your goal. The practical issue we run into is we want this stack of dominoes to tip over more quickly. Understandably so. We all have this inherent desire to do great things quickly. It's why humans as a species has advanced so quick. But I also feel like identifying that you're feeling impatient has some merit to it. Feeling like you wanna to get to your goal already, asking yourself, why is it taking so long? And we all know those corny quotes of anything that is worth doing takes a long time to do, etc., etc. Practically for me, the remedy to feeling impatient has been time and also just focusing on the domino in front of me. There's an interesting concept in neuroscience which essentially talks about a bunch of neuronal cells called the reticular activating system, RAS for short, being the driver in our brain in deciding what we pay attention to. It's said to act like a filter between the subconscious and conscious mind. So for example, how this works, if you were to look around your room and look for the color blue, do you have any examples? The items you've identified were always there, but what the RAS does is bring them to light or even with sounds. Stop for a second and just listen to all the sounds around you. I bet there's something you didn't hear before. Again, it's the RAS blocking out what's not important. Sort of like a spotlight in an opera show. And so knowing this, I think we can leverage this. And instead of focusing on what we are lacking in life, we can switch our attention and think about what we have. An example of how to practically do this, to list how far you've come in that realm of life that you're dissatisfied with. Actively write this or vividly just imagine it, but think about where you used to be to where you are now. A lot of the time you don't realize how far you've come until you see someone who's where you used to be. At work we regularly have students follow us around and not to say that any of them are stupid or slow at work because God knows I was, but seeing them lets you reflect on how far you've come personally in your competency and you get an unbiased viewpoint without your own cognitive biases. Again, not to say that I feel better than anyone, but when I see a student struggling with something that I no longer do, it comforts me because it shows me I truly have gained some experience and bolstered my competency at work. So force yourself to think of what you are grateful for and how far you've come. You might not know it, but you could be living someone else's dream life. All right, second thing, what would someone who has that goal spend today doing? Whether you want to be a YouTuber, an athlete, a millionaire, whatever it is, what are they doing today? What are they focusing on? And then do that. Whether you have 1 million subscribers or 19, both are YouTubers and both need to do the whole process. Things like storyboarding, scripting, shooting, editing videos. For some reason that gives me comfort in knowing that someone who is wildly successful at the very top still needs to do the same processes that a person just starting off needs to do. So what would an athlete spend today doing? What would a millionaire spend today doing? Think of this and do that. The key here is these results didn't come overnight. They came bit by bit. I can't tell you when your goals will come, but I want you to just stop focusing on the big monumental goals and just focus on the little small tidbit goals and just to focus on what is in your control today. The third point is to be like a racehorse with blinders. Look down your lane and don't focus on other things. Spending time thinking about other people's progress or where they're at is time that could be better spent working towards your own goals. 
Look down your lane and don't focus on what others have. Being lustful for what others have is completely understandable and it's okay as well. It helps you appreciate and understand what you value and that helps to get to know yourself better which is always a good thing. But looking at what others have does nothing to knock over the domino right in front of you. So I want to leave you with this question today. What's the domino in front of you that you need to knock over today?